Have you ever wondered how to roam around without any sort of stress? Have you ever gone on a trip? You know guys, going on a trip might be the one sole thing necessary to overcome any sort of blunders. So if you find an inaccurate situation, just pack your bag and go. Well, did you ever have any confusion while deciding the destination? If you didn't or did have a confusion, just go through this. The destination is Portugal, the land of history, architecture, delicious food, drink, and the best set of accommodations. Yes, this is Portugal. Even though Portugal is a bit smaller in size when compared to the other countries, it is the smartest and affordable place to travel. So, when you have slightest talk about Portugal, the first thing you're going to hear is to go for a road trip, admire the architecture, food, etc. And of course, the drinks. So this means 10 days is really not enough to see everything in Portugal, but with a popular, proper plan, without any doubt can cover almost the best destinations. The country aged like a fine drink as it seems, Portugal fulfills fairness for the entire height that it receives. Most important is its landscapes. For example, from the terrace and the Douro Valley and ends to the extraordinary beaches in the Algarve. Sounds good to you, right? Let's get into it! So here are some tips before we start the tour. Summer is the best season to visit Portugal, so from early July to halfway September gives you the best weather. Another important thing to be noted is working out where to stay. You can see that each destination had different layouts. So in order to indulge into the same, you can book in advance during the season. Day 1. Lisbon A place with an artistic ensemble of vibrant azulejos, eye candy vistas, pastel houses, and melancholic fado music. Lisbon gives the best eye-catchy feast. So the first place in Lisbon is to the Rocio Square set. The moment you land at Lisbon begin from Banxia, starting from exploring the town, admire the wavy tall mosaics and why not. Next, as you move to Chiado, one of the most wizard is the evocative Carmo Convent. After that visit, settle or wind up your day at an authentic Chiado atri, like Taberna do Raf das Flores o Cantinho do Eviles. And please don't dine there, because most of them are tourist restaurants. Day 2. Explore Lisbon Rise and shine move all the way to the most eccentric neighborhood of Lisbon, the El Fama. Here, you will be walking into the immortalized history of Fado rising up Lisbon. The El Fama, a city outside a city, being one of the authentic districts. Then, there is St. George's Castle and Miradouros viewpoints of El Fama, Largo das Portas de Sol de Miradouro de Graca. Then to museums, the National Tile Museum where you'll be able to see and study the histories of Lisbon's El Zoo Legio decorations, and another museum named Golbenkian Museum. Lisbon is known for its medieval caricature, traditional buildings with mind-blowing collections of museums, including the Caloste Golbenkian, the mega collector of ancient art. For dinner, choose Time at Market in the Warehouse, a total foodie heaven nourished and blended on with incredible chefs at Lisbon. There are also different places for drinks. Day 3. Explore Belém, Lisbon's UNESCO neighborhood. Morning of day 3, the destination one for the day is Belém. Trams from Comercio Square or Figueira Square will lead you there. Jerónimo's Monastery, 500-year-old UNESCO site and a mandatory destination, have to be your top priority. Then, to the Tower of Belém, guess what you'll know about when you see it for real. It's just a 15-minute stroll along the river from the Jerónimo's Monastery. Get your tickets for the same not online, but there will be a line. Head to Lisbon's Heaven, the hilly arena of Bairro Alto for food and drink. Day 4, day trip to nearby Sintra. Start your day 4 from the most gorgeous popular de Sintra. Of course, expect the long queues with a huge crowd. Pina Palace, popular in Sintra, is one of the seven wonders of Portugal. The 19th century built palace being the most romantic, colorful, and heavy handed of or a collaboration of different architectural styles. On the very same day, set your route to the Quinta da Regalera, the superstitious and eccentric palace with a stony affair with follies and mysterious nature. By the way, you can stay at the Boutique Hotel, a huge renovated palace with amazing views. The ever ride Palacio Santa Catarina. Also, you may check the Alex Boutique, the Memo Prince Spill real and there are other pretty good options out there too. Day 5 Visit Orbidos and Alcobaca Monastery en route to Coimbra. 
Day 5 is here. Pack your bags, set your en route to the city of Coimbra in central Portugal an hour from Lisbon. The beautiful town on a hill rounded with medieval culture. And not that 30 minutes from the north of Bidos is El Cabaca Monastery. Stay there and enjoy this beauty. Day 6, explore Coimbra. On day 6 of your 10 days in Portugal, you'll explore the pretty city of Coimbra called the Athens of Portugal. As for the start, you'll be amazed by the splendid architecture of the Coimbra University with a courtyard containing a cluster of the 16th to 18th century buildings. After wandering around the Coimbra city, set your route to the old town of the city. This city has a beauty of its own, an attitude, metaphorically speaking, a poetry style. I hope you can experience that yourself. Where to stay in Coimbra? Solar Antigua Luxury Coimbra is a great place to stay with charming rooms, exposed stone walls. The Sapientia Boutique Hotel can be another option. Day 7, visit the Roman ruins of the Coimbrigia en route to Porto. On the seventh day of your trip, en route to the Roman ruins of Coimbrigia. Coimbrigia is rich with Roman settlements. The highlight of Coimbrigia is its exquisite and well-preserved collection of colorful mosaic floors. Depending upon your choice to stay and admire the afternoon explorer of Porto, the travel photographer's dream destination. As you pass by, you'll notice Livraria Lello, renowned for its lovely Art Deco, Art Noinu, and Gothic interior. Day 8, explore Porto. It's time and it's here in Porto. I mean, we're here, there is so much to do in Porto by applying ample time. Beginning from the gorgeous Capella di Almas and the Instagram famous Egregia di Carmo, both clad in blue azulejos. The Capella di Almas. The charmer of a church totally wrapped with ornate blue and white tile mural on its exterior, the lovely Egregia di Carmo is close to Livraria Yellow and the Palucio di Balsa. The Church of San Francisco is also a stunner. The outside is Gothic and the inside is all Baroque. You'll feel choked with orange gold details fixed on the church with 450 pounds of gold in total everywhere. Unfortunately, no photos are allowed in the church. Day 9, day trip to Gomares and Satania de Praeteros. When is Portugal not the Aveiro medieval Guamareus is the exact thing here from the 9th century known for the medieval squares, Larger de Oliveira and Praça de Santiago. Imagine sipping Portuguese coffee or better, say a glass of drink, and while looking out you see the monasteries, the architecture, the delicious smell. On your way back to Porto, get off all the beaten path and stop at Cetania de Preterios. It's just a 25 plus minute drive from Guamarias. From Cetania, it is a 1 hour 10 minutes drive back to Porto. Day 10, tour the Douro Valley. The moment you realize this is your last day of your Portugal itinerary, what should you do? Exactly, this is the upright bit to do or take a classic tour in the Douro Valley. This place is known for its glorious and magnificent spot with a dramatic valley exhibiting steep terrace. Yards developed into mountains, granite bluffs, 18th century yards and pretty villages. Where to stay in Porto? Porto is a world with awesome hotels, one among those is the historic hotel as the Mason Elbar Hotel's Lee Monumental Palace near the Clarigos Tavern with an indoor swimming pool in Spicity. Another beautiful, romantic and tastefully renovated historic building named Porto Bay Floors with a spa and wellness facilities. Porto Bay Floors is a hotel in a tastefully renovated historic building with spa and wellness facilities. Stunning outdoor pool and panoramic views of the, over the city is the speciality of the next option, which is the Toral Avant Garde. Like you already know, cash is important, funny right? Which is why you should be alert enough to carry some cash in Portugal. Cards are acceptable and applicable but still there are small shops or restaurants who prefer cash and this is funny. Anyways, our plan was to complete this itinerary in 10 days. Although, this might not be the best option for you from my day, first attempts plan. You can even reverse this order. Portugal is a beauty. Once you reach there, it would be difficult to leave the place to your home. I guess you never know. Hope this video was helpful and don't forget to hit the like button and of course, do subscribe and comment your suggestions.